Okay, well, welcome everyone to the birthday celebrations, Mr. Harry Edwards. Uh, this is the 29th of May, 2020. And um, we have a wonderful day uh, or session lined up today with a number of speakers. And the first one that's joining us uh, to start off the celebrations is uh, Mr. Martin Thomas, our Chair of Trustees. So over to you, Martin. Thank you very much, Teresa. Can you hear me okay? Good stuff. All righty. Well, thank you very much. And I don't know if uh, you share my awe still at this uh, technology that we're using. I know we've become familiar with it in the last few weeks, but still, um, it just still is, it's sort of Dick Tracy stuff to me. I'd never even heard of Zoom a couple of months ago. And here we are, uh, you know, all communicating and uh, seeing each other live. It is absolutely astonishing. And what a wonderful, uh, usage of this new technology which i'm sure was the divine plan for it without sounding too pompous um the reason i appeared to be laughing inappropriately whilst Teresa was speaking there was simply because i could see joe uh, with her horse in the background and i was reminded of an email i saw earlier on in the week which uh, Teresa sent out as part of the preparations for this event today and in the email i got it said that uh, joe will be uh, addressing us with her horse, which will be, and will be saying a few words. So I was just having the image of the horse talking to us, obviously with its mouth full because it's feeding hay. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so um, hello everybody and a warm welcome uh, to the celebration of what would be uh, Harry Edwards's 127th birthday, uh, having been born in 1893. Uh, I've just got a few words just to sort of open the afternoon, nothing uh, of any particular vitality, but uh, uh, bear with me for a few minutes um, because we can be sure that uh, Harry Edwards is here with us today and we welcome him. And um, as always in a birthday celebration, uh, we should start by raising a glass, metaphorically, it's a bit early in the afternoon, of course, uh, but for anything too strong, but to say, happy birthday, Harry. We, um, we should, I suppose, also sing a round of uh, happy birthday to you. But if um, I don't know if any of you have been on a Zoom call where there has been an unmuted group singing, but it really is a cacophony to behold. It really is beyond awful <laughs> because of the time delays, I think. <laughs> so we'll have to save that until we get together physically at the sanctuary. Um, so as Teresa has touched upon, we do have a varied programme of short presentations for this afternoon. Uh, and I'm not going to steal the next speaker's thunder because uh, Rowena will be uh, talking to us about the history of the sanctuary and how it was founded. Um, however, I thought it would be interesting uh, just to have a little look at what was happening in the year that Harry Edwards was born, just to get a, a bit of context, really, what was going on in 1893. And, uh, as historians almost always start by saying, Queen Victoria was on the throne. <laughs> and um, she was 74 years old at the time and had been queen for 56 years, having been crowned in 1837. And the prime minister at that time was uh, William Gladstone, and he was also a very mature 84 years old. So really the establishment at the time that Harry Edwards was born was very much ready for the start of a new era. And um, what were the significant events of that year, I, I wondered. Um, in amongst them um, was the patent of the diesel engine, which seems hard to believe really, because it is now basically powering the whole world. Uh, the First Ladies Amateur Golf Championship was held at the beautiful Litham and St Anne's Golf Course and the First Ladies College at Oxford University, St Hilda's, was opened. So uh, one can quite easily imagine the Victorian ladies reaching for the smelling salts at the prospect of the fairer sex playing golf and uh, going to university. Um, <laughs> but um, who else might be in the maternity wing of the hospital? It was another question that occurred to me besides Harry Edwards in his cot. Uh, you'd find Leslie Howard, the famous uh, actor from the 1930s who appeared in Pygmalion and Gone with the Wind. Uh, and possibly in the cot next to him was Dorothy L. Sayers, the novelist. 
So that gives us a flavour for what the world was like around that time. Uh, 1893 was also the year that Queen Victoria's eldest surviving grandson, uh, Prince George, it married Queen of um, Mary, Mary of Teck. She became Queen Mary and he became uh, King George V. And he was the king who changed the um, Schloberg Schloss, was it the family name, to the Windsors just before the First World War when he was king. Now, interestingly, um, Prince George's sister, uh, Princess Marie Louise, uh, who was also one of Queen Victoria's grandchildren, was one of the famous patients, apparently, that Harry Edwards treated, uh, a little known fact, uh, along with Lady Baden Powell, the wife of the founder of the Scout movement. Um, there have been many other famous people that Harry Edwards treated and who have uh, been treated at the sanctuary since Harry's time. Um, but of course, their privacy, along with ours and all of our clients, is, um, is totally protected. Um, we know that uh, Harry Edwards was humble and a very well-grounded individual with no airs and graces. Even though he became uh, very famous in his lifetime, uh, he retained his humility, and I, I just thought that that and the control of his ego is a, a message and an example to us all, right relevant to us today. Harriet was, was also uh, externally focused. So as well as running the Healing Sanctuary, uh, he founded the National Federation of Spiritual Healers, uh, now the Healing Trust. Um, and that organization established healing centers up and down the country uh, and indeed overseas. Uh, he also took uh, a great interest in promoting healing as a complementary therapy to be working alongside conventional medicine, as, as I expect you are aware. Uh, and you can be sure uh, that he would have been very proud of the work that's been done recently during the Healing Awareness Week. Um, one of the highlights of that uh, was the refreshing and re-energizing of our relationships with the National Federation, the Healing Trust as it now is, uh, and with other sister healing organizations that do healing, such as the Spiritualist National Union and the UK Healers, uh, and more recently, at least for Harry Edwards' um, healing sanctuary, uh, our relationship with the Sam Buxton Sunflower Healing Trust. Uh, as you probably have heard, that's the organization that sponsors um, the placement of healers at uh, NHS hospitals. Um, and looking back on our recent achievements, uh, we should be well proud of the fact that we've been able to keep the sanctuary open during the lockdown. Um, we've been very much open for business. Uh, and that is thanks, of course, to our staff who've been able to uh, continue to work. Those of them that have been able to, either coming into the sanctuary and social distancing or those that have uh, continued to work at home. Uh, and of course, to our dedicated he team of volunteer healers who have provided the healing energy during this time. And of course, a huge part of being open uh, has been harnessing the power of social media. Here we are again. Um, this has really propelled us forward uh, enabled, and enabled us uh, to link with a new audience, a whole new population uh, of people we probably wouldn't other, otherwise have been able to connect with. So as well as publicizing the work of the sanctuary, it has also enabled uh, our most successful ever Healing Awareness Week, um, where, as I've mentioned, we refreshed our connections with our uh, sister organizations and also took the message to uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people, many of whom are new to our work. And, and this has really provided a new impetus um, to the possibility of us collaborating with, uh, with other organizations in the future. And, and how wonderful really uh, it is that um, we have the prospect of sharing uh, the platform with those other organizations in the future. Uh, very much uh, united uh, in strength, I think, is the opportunity for us. Um, we've also breathed new life into the Healing Minute, um, and this has now become a permanent daily broadcast uh, live on Facebook, uh, as I hope you know. Um, and it's been so successful 
that um, we're hoping and planning to continue with it in some form after the lockdown has eased. So look forward to um, messages about that. So looking to the future, there are many exciting opportunities to expand our healing work. Um, and especially as we consciously push to move healing to the top of our agenda. We hope to consolidate and grow our social media presence and to seek new ways of using it to reach new audiences, uh, as well as raising our profile and the publicity of the sanctuary's work. That's what we, we want to do. Uh, we're also looking forward to sort of coming back to our roots, if you like, to expanding our contact healing work uh, when we're able to reopen the doors of the sanctuary. Um, as you'll probably remember, uh, we have uh, removed the fee for that. It is now donation only. So we're very much hoping that that will stimulate an increase in the visitor numbers to the sanctuary for people physically coming uh, for hands on healing when the time comes. Um, you know, and it's donation only exactly the way it was in Harry Edwards's day. So we're again returning to uh, a method that Harry Edwards established for us. So that's pretty much my opening, um, my introduction for you this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, as Teresa says, we invite you to stay for as long as you wish. We'll be here at least until four o'clock. Um, I'm pleased now to hand you back to our captain on the flight deck, Teresa Lehman. And just before I do, I would like to ask you to thank me sincerely. Um, to, well, <laughs> that's a bit premature. To join me in thanking Teresa sincerely for all the work she's done uh, in <laughs> organising this afternoon's events uh, and uh, for uh, coordinating the team that is supporting her. So all of us, Teresa, thank you very much for all you've done. You're very welcome and thank you <laughs> sincerely. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, good. Well, we can see how the tone of the day is going to go. So very much, I hope you're all feeling quite relaxed. You know, sit back. This is a fun session today. So I'm very informal, like birthday parties always are. So um, Rowena um, is next and, and me and Rowena are going to tag team this a little bit. So I'll be doing the... Um, the controls on the PowerPoint as Rowena will share with us some some things. So uh, Rowena, if I can invite you to come off mute just while I, yeah, if you can right. say hello, are you with us? Okay. Hello, yeah. there you are. Right, I'm just going to get the uh, PowerPoint set up. If you can give me just one mo moment. I'll just fire this up. All right, and I just want to check, Rowena, that you can see the bubbles move in there for me. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. All right, we're ready to go. Um, so this session, as I mentioned, Rowena is going to share a bit around um, memories and inspirations of Harry Edwards's life. And also we'll start to really build a picture of, of some of the passions and loves and visions that uh, we believe Harry has. Um, so, so over to you, Rowena. OK, all right. Um, well, hello, everybody. You can't see me talking, but never mind. So I hope I look OK. <laughs> um, right, I'm delighted to wish Harry Edwards a very happy birthday. Um, my gift is to share some happy memories of his birthday's past. And I'll be delighted to read out letters from Felicity, his oldest daughter, who lives on the Isle of Wight with her family and from Stephen, her oldest son, who was also a healer. Um, next, please, Teresa. Um, this is Harry Edwards as a baby. He was uh, three months old. Um, as Martin said, he would have been 127 years uh, today. He was born in Islington on London, in London on the 29th of May, 1983. He was the eldest of nine children. His father was a printer and his mother a dressmaker. 
He was not particularly academic and could get up to lots of mischief with the gang of boys he met, known locally as the Teddy Edwards Gang. In 1905, he fell in love with the butcher's daughter, Dolly Reed, and decided to uh, reform his behaviour, and he was determined to make something of himself. Just before his 14th birthday, um, he followed in his father's footsteps and did a seven year apprenticeship, uh, which he really disliked uh, in the printing trade. And if he could skive off doing things, he would. He came, became very interested in politics after printing leaflets for the Liberal Party and delivering them later in life. He campaigned for this party on several occasions, but was unsuccessful. He became the youngest member, aged 16, to join the Lambeth League of the Young Liberals. However, just after his 21st birthday in 1914, he completed his apprenticeship as a printer. And in his own words, he said, being he was the most unsatisfactory uh, uh, apprentice that any firm ever had. Uh, next slide, please, Theresa. Um, Teresa, I can't see anyone, but uh, so I hope you can still see me. But if not, just the the print, uh, the photographs are fine. Um, this is in Harry Edwards uh, in uniform, uh, World War One, 1914. So it's the outbreak of war uh, in that same year, and uh, there was no stopping Harry. Now um, he would got his apprenticeship, and the next day he and one of his liberal friends joined up to serve their country and enlisted as a volunteer in the 2nd and 6th Cyclist Battalion of the Royal Sussex Regiment. This was where his life was to take another path. At the end of, age, uh, the end of 1915, age 22, the battalion barked upon the SS Ceramic for services in India. Harry's family were very proud of him, and when his last sister was born, when he was 23 years old, she was given the name Marjorie, with her middle name, Ceramic, after the SS ship that Harry sailed on to Bombay. Harry was always full of ideas and knowledge of, of print, although he disliked it, was given permission to launch the Royal Sussex Herald with a battalion published every fortnight and consisted of 16 pages. It wasn't long before a new position came up and he was told to report to the King's own zappers and miners uh, the equipment of the Royal Engineers. To justify the transfer from a printer, he was made an engineer and promoted to Lance Corporal, complete with sword. His training was thorough, 60 minutes, and a crash course in bridge building. However, there had been nothing in his course of instruction about building bridges over water. Roads, yes, but rivers, no. This didn't stop Harry. He simply had the bridge built on dry land alongside a river, and then when all was ready, a few well-placed sticks of dynamite persuaded the river to alter its course and flow under the solid stone bridge that awaited it. This was only one of the many construction jobs which had to be done. Harry joined the general headquarters um, of the Mesopotamian Exhibitionary Force in Baghdad and became the mess secretary, but it wasn't long before the general marshal then asked Corporal Edwards if he would like a commission in the field. He was sent to Turkirk, a walled Arab town not far from Baghdad. He was to accomplish many marbles of constructions in his capacity as an engineer. He only had two British soldiers and therefore had to rely on local workforce as the instructions were to lay bridges and railway tracks. Uh, between Turkirk and Baghdad, also to construct roads and bridges to carry out military equipment. He also organised the construction of the incinerator for the camps, refuse. He planned around one, 20 feet across, of brickwork. His men sent to work with the bricks so high to the labourers of Harry's delight that it became known as the Harry Edwards Mosque. He put out a plea for local people to join him, and people came in their droves, bringing with them hammers, nails, pickaxes and shovels to help uh, position the sleepers and fixing the rails. They also brought their wives and children. 
there were many entries as the pickaxes, shovels and sledgehammers came, a succession of hands and feet with muffled bruising and frequent causes of bad lacerations. They asked Harry for help. He only had bandages and iodine, but somehow they all healed very quickly. Another lovely story is about a local uh, Arab sheikh who heard about his healings. So one day they rode into um, Harry Edwards' camp with all his soldiers on horseback, because don't forget it was uh, just in the early parts of the World War I war. And um, they had a mule and on either side was a big pan of basket. One side had Harry Edwards' mother in, sorry, the Sheikh's mother in, <laughs> and the other was a maid. Uh, she was very poorly, um, the old mother. And uh, so Harry didn't really know what to do. So what he did was he um, got some carbolic um, tooth powder, which was pink, and put them into some little sachets and said, um, well, if you drink this um, sunrise and sunset for three days, on the third day, you'll be better. So off they all rode and everyone seemed to be happy. Um, and on the third day, they all came back again. And um, so Harry was thought, well, okay, that, uh, that's it. I've had my chips now. Um, but they were delighted because the mother had greatly improved and she was better. So they said, well, what can we give you? you know, would you like some gold? Do you want carpets? What would you like? He said, well, just a few eggs for my uh, men. So off they went and they returned with 300 eggs for his men the next day. Um, at this time, Harry had no idea of his healing powers. And eventually when he left um, Baghdad, um, all the workforce and everyone came out and they were all crying in the streets and they didn't want him to leave. And they all said, please don't, Hakim, you're our healer, you're our doctor and we love you. Uh, the next slide please, Teresa. Right, so now we're back in England. Um, and this is a picture of uh, the christening of Barbara and Adam's um, second daughter, Angela. Okay, um, with Harry Edwards. Right, so the picture on the left is Megan. Um, that is Harry Edwards' daughter. Um, with her three children, which is Sue, uh, John on her lap, and Jill standing. Felicity is in the middle. Uh, Felicity was his oldest daughter, and she's uh, present, alive, uh, and living in the Isle of Wight. She was with, with Mark, and Stephen was standing. Stephen is uh, uh, the oldest boy, um, and he was a healer, and still is. Um, then there's Barbara. And she had baby Angela on her lap and Sheila was by her side. Um, I was speaking to uh, Felicity this morning and I said, well, who took the picture? Was that your mother or what? Well, she wasn't quite sure. She couldn't remember, but she'd have to look back through her files and all her photographs. But she said it was either her mother or Tony, uh, their um, brother. Uh, next, please, Teresa. Next slide, please, Teresa. Right, this is uh, life with grandpa. So, um, I'd like to share now some stories um, about uh, life with grandpa. This was written by Stephen uh, the other day for me and for everyone. The days of Parisley are very fond ones. During the time, my mother was busy with the birth of my brother, Tim. I stayed with my cousins, Sheila and Angela, who lived at Burroughs Lee, and was looked after and spoiled by my aunt Barbara and grandpa's sister, Ivy. At that time, coaches would arrive several times a week, and the place would become very busy, as grandpa, after lunch, would put on his white coat and go to the sanctuary for an afternoon's healing session. I had little idea of what was happening, but it was the normal daily life at Burroughs Lee. The offices rang with a clatter of typewriters as the office staff answered the hundreds of letters that arrived each day. 
Luckily for me, a lady called Mrs. Shepherd opened to all the mail and saved all the stamps from all parts of the world for me to collect on our weekly visits. This was gold dust for a schoolboy making me popular with my collecting friends at school. On a summer's evening, while staying at Burrows Lee, I joined my grandfather on his evening stroll along what is now the cherry tree walk. He explained how the retaining wall, which rose to con uh, contain the upper lawn, heated up by the end of the day and released the warmth in the evening, which was enhanced with the scent of uh, plants on a still evening. Later, the, travel tree, the cherry trees were planted. And as he said to me in later years, the shadow would benefit the scented walk. As I became a young man, I became more aware of how extraordinary Grandpa was, watching him at the Royal Festival Hall and other packed venues, demonstrating to me what was the impossible. This was a dilemma for me as I rejected, uh, I rejected religion and the superior school of thought. We spoke about this after a healing session that I had sat in on the sanctuary and witnessed a healing to this very day that haunted me. A young Swedish girl had come to see him, suffering from a deformed spine, giving her a sideways S shape, which he traced with his fingers. He placed a hand around her waist and with the other, rocked her gently from side to side. I watched the process in front of me Ray Branch was in attendance to steady her as she sat on a stool. It might have been 10 minutes or so and a tangible stillness settled on all those present. When he finished, he held her hands and her gaze in that way, we all knew so well. They stood up, she upright and straight, and I swear at least four inches taller, there were gasps from all around and a lump in everyone's throat as her parents held her hand and walked her out into the sunshine. I queried grandpa over tea later, trying to understand how the pads between the vertebrae could have recovered so fast to support her. And the whole process was no discomfort. He said that sometimes it would take several sessions to achieve this, but in this case, all went well. Very visibly, complaints such as a large goiter on a lady's neck just disappeared under his hand as I watched him, and the arthritic hands locked into a fist were freed and able to flex without discomfort. Sometimes, he said, sadly, the healing is only temporary as patients return to damp and cold conditions, so the problem returns. I, at that time, was in my 20s, and I said to him, I would like to become a healer. He looked at me and said, Stephen, you need to feel compassion. He gave me lots of advice, which I had always valued. Most of the time, he was making us laugh and loved to play jokes on us. One I will really remember well. My brother, Mark took his fiance wife, Roz, to stay at Barra's Lee. In the dining room, Roz picked up an avocado stone. Avocados were quite uncommon then. She asked Grandpa what it was. Grandpa told her it was a crocodile egg and that if she kept it nice and warm, tucked into her chest, it would hatch out. <laughs> I don't think it ever did. <laughs> At that time, there were lots of pets at Barrowsley among them. A parrot named Poppet, who, when there were visitors from Madame Two Swords, who came to make cast of Grandpa's hands to be later cast in bronze, placed, produced a loud hacker's cough, which it had remembered from Grandpa's chain smoking days. Grandpa followed this up by pressing his nose down on the table, and then with a pen, hitting the table under his nose, so that it sounded as if it had broken it. <laughs> this was a side of Grandpa we all knew and loved. Uh, next slide, please, Teresa.
Um, I'd like to share also um, Stephen's uh, birthday memory, a gift from Grandpa. As a teenager, I decided to buy Grandfather a birthday present and knowing his sense of mischief, settled on a rubber glove from a joke shop. It had long black nails, black hairy backs, and was covered in warts. I asked him to close his eyes as I slipped it onto his hand. And when he saw it, I saw that twinkle in his eyes, which told me he was gonna have some fun. The typist in the office noticed heavy breathing sounds as the door opened slowly and the hand crept slowly around the edge. They dutifully screamed, well used to his antics. I think Grandpa and I were on the same page when it came to having fun. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a picture um, of Felicity, um, who um, I was uh, privileged to meet when she came up with her family to Burrowsley for the uh, 70th anniversary. Um, with her on uh, left is uh, on her yeah the right of the picture is uh, tim then there's felicity uh then there is her niece which is jill and um, followed by mark at the end felicity's standing in front of her picture uh which she painted actually it was in her late uh, it was in her 80s she hadn't painted for many years and was given this old um, canvas uh, which she said was horrible, and she painted over the top. Um, her son, Mark, went off to get some paints and produced this beautiful picture. Um, she did, however, uh, which you can see now in the dining room, hanging in the dining room at Barrows Lee, and she was delighted to see her old picture. However, she did give Harry Edwards a picture for his birthday, which was of another Bluebell um, painting, which I believe is still in the hallway in, in Burroughs Lee. Um, next, please, Teresa. Um, so the first one is the dragon plate. So I have a little message from Felicity about her birthday gifts to her dad. Of all dad's birthdays on the 29th of May that I have shared with him, there are two that I remember so well. One was when we lived as a family of six in southwest London. This was where I spent some of my happiest childhoods. The first that I remember so well was when I was a child and each week was given a Saturday penny. I always made sure that I had a Saturday penny in hand for dad's birthday and on one occasion asked him what he would like for his birthday and he said well you can go to Woolworths which was the three penny and six penny store in Balham High Street and buy me a pack of Virginia stock flower seeds. I remember bringing them home and presenting them to dad. He opened them up and there were these seeds like tiny grains of sand. Now, said dad, I want you to go out into the garden to plant these for me. However, you must make sure that they all go the right side up. Luckily, my mum took pretty on me and scattered them among the plants. She managed to grow in that unproductive London soil. Even the weeds struggled to survive. Another birthday present that stands out for me came at the end of the war. When after a flying bomb had partly destroyed our London home, we found ourselves in a very pleasant home in Stoneley. In Surrey. My two sisters, Megan and Barbara, and I went into Epsom to an antique shop owned by a, London, uh, by a lady called Alma Kidd and found the perfect gift for dads, a 50th birthday present. We were overjoyed at our find, a large diamond green plate, which eventually hung in pride of place over the fireplace in the large land at Burroughs Lee. Dad was so pleased to have this. As far as I know, it still hangs in the lounge, and actually it does. I remember showing it to Paul White, a trustee, and telling him that it was Dad's 50th birthday present. 
Then, of course, uh, was that wonderful 80th birthday healing demonstration at the Royal Albert Hall in London. This was something that those left of us to remember will always look back on and value the memory. Um, the NFSH uh, wanted to throw a party for him and um, Harry very excitedly organised a coach um, bus to take them all up to London. So that was him and all his family, uh, all his sisters and their um, husbands and wives. Uh, the grandchildren stay behind. Um, when they arrived at the Royal Albert Hall, she said it was just so incredible. Um, there was the healing demonstrations and there they presented a bust of Harry, a bronze bust, um, which is beautiful. Uh, you can see it in one of the pictures, which was a birthday gift from the NFSH then. Uh, you can see this now, which is in the sanctuary at Barrows Lee. Um, So, uh, thank you, Teresa. <laughs> so, now we move on. So, um, Harry, so what was Harry like? Well, Harry loved his gardens, roses, hollyhocks, his cacti. He wasn't a gardener, but he just loved to be surrounded by um, plants everywhere. And there was always fresh flowers. Um, he loved reading James Bond novels and painting by numbers, um, jigsaw puzzles, love playing jokes on friends and family. Tea, yes, he liked his tea, but very, very weak. Uh, and everyone used to call it the Burroughs Lee tea. He loved um, playing badminton with his children and loved all animals and had a couple of aviaries and birds and tropical fish. Um, he did a lot of uh, animal healing as well. Um, we're in, I think we're going to introduce um, Joe now. I can't, uh, Teresa, if you can hear me. Uh, yeah, Joe will join us once we finish Rowena. So, um, oh, okay. so yeah, so we'll finish our set and then um, uh, we'll, we'll go over to Joe down in the stables. Which be okay quite then, so if we carry on for the next slide then, which will be um, uh, Healing for All. So Harry really loved his sanctuary and he, he moved in in 1946. Um, when he saw the place, he just knew it was going to be his sanctuary, his healing home. And um, so he clubbed together uh, with his sister Ivy because it was on the market for 12,000 um, pounds. However, he agreed uh, with the owner to pay 8,000. And uh, so he put in 2,000 and so did his sister. And then uh, the other 4,000, he was heavily mortgaged. So when Harry actually moved in, he only had 17 pound in his back pocket. Um, but he converted the uh, billiard room there into his healing sanctuary, um, which is still there now. And as I said, that was in 1946 and healing is going on to this very day. Uh, next, fl uh, the flowers. And as I said, he just adored all his flowers. Um, and I spoke to Felicity this morning uh, over in the Isle of Wight. And uh, she said, uh, she sends her love to everybody. And she said, normally on, the, um, on Harry Edwards' birthday, they have the first rose that comes out, but they're a bit behind uh, with the weather over there. But I'm sure they will uh, be blooming shortly. And uh, they also planted a whole load of hollyhocks because, uh, in memory of Harry, because he loved them as well. Um, so now we go on to uh, healers in the NHS. Um, just before uh, Teresa comes in, um, I'll just tell you a little bit about um, Harry. Um, Harry um, wanted to set up. Um, uh, back in, there was a, a, there was a very old um, witchcraft law that forbade um, anyone giving um, healing um, in uh, churches. It was illegal, in fact, and he wanted to abolish it. So Harry set up a divine healing commission 
and he addressed the commission providing that the documentary evidence of a number of successful healings. Although 70 were submitted, only three were investigated and these were later dismissed. A year after Harry's Edwards passing in 1977, the act was abolished. A policy was issued stating if permission was given for doctors to refer patients to accredited healers, they can if they saw fit. However, Harry had already started this back in the 50s and 60s by going into hospitals and kept a ledger which ones they visited. Unfortunately, although I was told about this about five years ago when I gave um, a presentation on um, Burroughs Lee to a WI um, group, um, there was a lady there who was a secretary in Harry Edwards' time and uh, she told me about the ledger because she remembers writing in it but it was never found. So even back then, um, he was so keen in getting everyone healing into the hospitals. And over to you, heal, um, Teresa, about the uh, healing. Yeah, um, thank you, Rowena. So um, kind of leading on from that, um, you might have heard about um, a global project that we've helped to start, which is the Sunflower healing garden and the seed of the idea excuse the pun um is around harry's love of um flowers and you know when you go to burrows lee you know that there's that wonderful picture there of bluebell woods that val chandler took for us um a month or two ago now and you can see that beautiful rainbow in the picture there um, and we were also inspired by Cherry Tree Walk with all the beautiful blossoms. You know, and as you go around, I think we have almost 32 acres in all. Um, and people can really enjoy the gardens and grounds. And we just thought, you know, during the time that we've all been through now, particularly, you know, the pandemic and things like that, what seeds of hope could we sow and how could we contribute in some way? And we thought sunflowers are just such a, a universal symbol of sunshine. Um, you know, most people look at a, a sunflower and it makes them smile or feel uplifted or hopeful. And for some, it's also a wonderful way to remember loved ones. So um, we were very inspired by that idea. And also at the same time, as Martin mentioned, um, we've been developing um, ways to really bring to life this vision that Harry has and contributed so far towards, but how could we really drive that forward more and more? And Angie Buxton King, with the wonderful work that she does with her Sunflower Healing Trust, which is all about getting actual paid healers into the NHS. I think Angie's placed nearly 40 healers now um, over the years through, through her charity. And we're hoping to support that more and more. Um, and so it's early days, um, but there are lots of opportunities there, particularly once uh, we start to come out of the pandemic now, um, to get more and more healers into the NHS in these paid positions. In order to do that, uh, we, we part fund or fully fund the healer for a period of time. And then what Angie has shared with us is that very often once the healer is in position, they're hired by the NHS or the hospice that they're, they're, they're in. Um, very often then, after that time has passed, whether it's a year or two years, uh, that hospital or hospice then uh, put their own funds to it and, and hire the person and take them forward. So we'd love to support that more. Uh, so we've set up, uh, we, we set this up back at the, I think it was back in December, November time, might have been a bit earlier in 2019. Um, and we've called it the Sunflower Pot essentially, or the HEHS, the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary Sunflower Pot. And if you can imagine it like a big money box, um, that's money that we've put to one side to help fund healers in, in going into the NHS. Uh, if you'd like to contribute, lots of people have been contributing, so thank you so much everyone that's been involved so far. Um, but if you'd like to donate, uh, we'd really be grateful for this because we do have 
good opportunities arising now that we we would like to explore and move forward with um, either by donating um, yourself and some people have been inspired also to do a bit of fundraising so that's been really helpful and, and quite interesting seeing how that's all all taken shape. Uh, to donate, you donate in the usual ways, so uh, information is on the website. Um, I think we have some buttons as well on Facebook and also ring reception. Um, I think we can text as well. Um, and just when you place the donation, if somewhere in the comments, either if you ring or if you're placing it electronically, uh, if you can write the word sunflower, then we know to put that into that pot, and not into our central pot. Um, and I think if you text, it's the word spring, so that the details are there on the website. Also, more bigger than that, what happened was, um, that was the idea kind of uh, March, um, and quite quickly, um, things really, um, kicked off in, in many, many ways, particularly, as you guys will know, with us uh, coming online and doing all, all the things that we've been doing. And at the same time, we were very inspired to really think about this sunflower healing garden more broadly. So whilst at the sanctuary, we are creating this, and it will be quite modest this year. Um, I think Steve, our gardener with the team, um, with the team well, i think it's just steve at the moment to be honest because of the pandemic very few people can be at the sanctuary um has planted um a few hundred sunflowers um so some of them will obviously come come to full bloom um and they will be positioned around the grounds over time if I could imagine this this develops more and uh, there have been lots of ideas from you guys and other people saying oh well, maybe we could share seeds with one another globally and there's some wonderful ideas percolating in this idea of the garden but that's physically located at the sanctuary and not everyone can get to the sanctuary for a variety of reasons and we thought actually this idea is much bigger than than any one of us and why don't we just create the concept of the sunflower healing garden for all globally so now this is its own thing its own sunflower if you like and this is where we're encouraging everybody uh high and low from across the globe just to get involved and run with this very simple idea which says the poster shares here uh to get involved just either grow or show a sunflower in whatever way feels right for you with your community and the hope here being that um Come September, we've got many, many of these sunny blooms in the Western Hemisphere. I assume it might be a bit different around the globe, depending on blooming times and things like that. And someone shared with us, how about, you know, we kind of view it as we're passing the sunshine around globally. And I know that Linda will, she shared so much inspiration from our Sunday service that we did during Healing Awareness Week. And I know will share with us as we, we go through today. So that's a little bit. And with the show, I've uh, just got one more slide to show you and then we'll switch to Joe. Um, uh, so the idea has already started to create a lot of creativity. And with the show, it could be a very simple thing. Join our Facebook group and you could show a picture or some inspiration or just pass the posts around and get more people involved. So show can be anything and everything really. Um, but Jo Allen, who is a wonderful local artist that we've only just recently connected with um, during this pandemic time, um, Jo was inspired and said, actually, I'd love to create some artwork uh, towards the Sunflower Healing Garden for the sanctuary. And she's created this absolute it's just a beautiful piece of art and the more you look at it um the more you see so you'll see the rainbows in the butterflies all sorts of things and um if you haven't seen it we have a recording 
um, on the website under Healing Awareness Week and it's off the Sunday service and in there Jo, we, we get transported to Jo's workshop who shared with us her process of how she created this and um, once I think this is now framed and at some point it will be transported up to the sanctuary for everyone to see for years to come and I feel quite emotional about that because I'm very very grateful I think we all are for, for what Joe's created so hopefully that's inspired you all a little bit to get involved in some way in the sunflower healing garden and it really ties in I hope you can see the links there of how it ties with healing and Harry's love of of the gardens and how we could be sowing seeds here that are very um, powerful for generations to come all right I just want to thank you very much Rowena for that um if I can now I'll stop sharing and we can see you we have been able to see you Rowena some um me and you will only be able to see the powerpoint but everyone that's with us they'll be able to um see us and now um I just want to go over to Joe thank you so much Joe and your lovely horse there for being really patient out in the wonderful sunshine I don't know if we can hear you can you say anything for us can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Thank you. And you've got a lovely cameraman joining you, or lady. <laughs> we have, we have. Thank you. Uh, well, hello, everyone, and welcome to a beautiful sunny day. Um, the reason why we're here is we're actually based at the bottom of um, Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. Um, the farm, Drydown Farm, is right at the bottom of the valley. So when you go to the sanctuary, all the land, all the animals that you see in the valley, Belong to Dry Down Farm. Um, it has an amazing energy. Um, the horses, the sheep, the cattle. I think quite a few people are enjoying the, the lamb um, we've been hosting. But really, today's about celebrating Harry and Harry's birthday and about gifts. And um, animal healing is uh, a gift that Harry also had and was really passionate about. Um, both myself and Val are members of the Healing Animals Organisation and we've been healing animals for some time now. Um, this gentleman here is Munchie um, and healing is about giving and receiving and we very much heal each other. Um, he gave me as a gift from my horse Widget who sadly passed away three years ago next week. Um, I basically couldn't stop crying, so he very kindly sent me this boy. Uh, Munchie was wild in Ireland for the first six years of his life. He came over to England unhandled and unbacked. As you can see now, he's very docile. But when he first came, you couldn't get near him, you couldn't touch him. So healing was fantastic because I could start from six feet away. And then I would just slowly get nearer and nearer and nearer. So I'd start here. If I went to move closer to him, he would move away. And healing animals is all about boundaries, um, about them ex you know, accepting the healing, wanting the healing. So um, he was really, really good. And I just got closer and closer and closer until I actually got my hand, healing hand on him. And the healing is such a strong trust um, between us, it's such a strong bond. And he now is um, an eventer, we event. And so really our gift today for Harry is the gift of horses and animals and healing energy. And hoping that the healing that, that the horses give out, you know, will spread across the valley in the sanctuary. And um, I was just seeing Grant <laughs> um, and you know we can share that on this special day. A student from Harriet um, and feel the um, healing energy and learn how amazing the horses are. So really, just happy birthday, Harry! And uh, we will all be sending healing um, during Teresa's meditation and group healing session later. So hopefully, you feel that wonderful equine energy then. Aww. Thank you so much, Joe and Munchie, and, and whoever's doing the camera work there, well done. Um, and 
you know and like you said i mean you know animals give so much healing to us as well so um we're very very grateful for you uh, joining us today from this lovely location in such sunny weather so uh, hopefully you're all keeping quite you know, as cool as you can there as well <laughs> yes. all right so thank you joe um okay now i'd like to switch over to um nikki uh, so nikki if you can come come into the room with us figuratively just check that we've got you all okay nikki are you with us yeah i've just yeah. turned yeah. there we go hello nikki um and in uh, just while i'm setting up your um lovely slides that you've presented rowena could you introduce nikki for us because i know you guys go back quite away and uh, uh, have a few words to say. So, Marina, I'd like you to introduce Nikki for us. Okay. Um, yes, well, I've known Nikki. Um, well, Nikki is a, a master of uh, a feng shui consultant and an expert on Chinese horoscopes, date selection, and the I Ching, and which she's been studying for over 25 years. Um, I met Nikki through the Chu Foundation when I was a student back in 2002 um, when I was studying feng shui with Grandma Master Chan who was the president of the organization. Um, many years later uh, when I was qualified as a practitioner um, I also became the research coordinator for the foundation. Um, then I did a two-year um, Harry Edwards spiritual healing course and um, so after I was qualified with that and uh, with my knowledge of feng shui, um, I decided to set up a research group um, and do a consultation on Burroughs Lee and uh, invited a, a group along. Um, so Nikki was one of our masters there. We were very fortunate to have her along with some, very, some other friends and um, colleagues who are also very experienced in their field. Um, we had a really lovely day and uh, with all Nikki's knowledge was great. Also, um, we, we did a presentation uh, for our AGM that year, um, quite a few years ago now. But Nikki also did Harry Edwards Chinese Horoscope, so which was really interesting. So I contacted her recently <laughs> and said, would she be prepared to share it with us uh, today? And so this is Nikki's gift uh, for Harry Edwards, um, his Chinese horoscope. Over to you, Nikki. Wonderful. Thank you. And I'm just going to bring that up, Nikki, for you, and then we'll start. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, Bear with me for a moment, guys. We're just switching between files. Okay. Uh. All right, Nikki, can you see that all okay? Yeah, I can see it fine. I hope everybody else can see it well too. Yeah, yeah. I will do. Thank you. And they'll be able to see you, I assume. It's just me and you, the, just seeing the, the PowerPoint. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, hello, everybody. And um, as you've just heard, my gift for today is to explain a little bit about Harry's chart. Um, his is quite an interesting chart, as I'm sure you would expect. Um, so I think if we move forward to the next um, slide, I can, I can talk a little bit more about the chart itself. So the, um, the top part that you can see here is what we call his birth chart. And this shows you the year, the month, the day, the hour um, that he was born. And also um, from the hour, we create what's called the life house which represents the position of the sun at the time that he is born. And then underneath, um, we have what we call the fate cycle. So they're 10 year periods that take you through different um, 
times in his life, it's the challenges that come up, it's the good and the bad and the things that um, make our life what it is. So first of all, we'll look at his main chart. Um, so it's interesting that we've been talking a lot about sunflowers because Harry himself, we read somebody and their character from the day that they're born. And he was born on what we call a yang fire day. Now the symbol for yang fire in Chinese represents the sun. So you could almost say in his Chinese chart, the sun is symbolic of who he was. So that makes him, um, not only is it the day he was born, but fire is very, very strong inside his chart. So from the picture I've put up, you can see um, how much is in red. So all the red sections show you that those elements are fire. Um, there's one that's green, that, that, that is the wood, which obviously supports the fire, and also a couple that are blue. So he only has those three elements inside his main chart, which makes his chart a really, really strong um, fire chart. So being a strong fire chart means that he was going to be somebody that was always going to be on the move, always be very active, um, would be very difficult, particularly when he was younger, to sit around and not do a great deal. And um, with so much fire, he would also be quite, he'd have a lot of ideas, a lot of inspiration, and also be able to see them through. Um, mostly, obviously, there's a few things that wouldn't have been um, perfect for him. So I think um, if we move on to the next slide. So here I've, I've talked a little bit about his character, the fact that he is a fire character. Um, it's interesting that inside his chart he has these three snakes and snakes have always been associated with um, medicine and healing. If you take it back to the days of um, Greek mythology, then um, the symbol that I put on here that shows the single snake on the, on the rod is known as the, um, the staff of Asclepius, which is, is known as a symbol of healing. It represented um, you know, the Greek god associated with medicine. And then more recently, um, the second symbol there is the, um, the symbol of Caduceus, which has the two snakes on it. Now, this also became by chance associated with um, healing, but for the wrong reasons. Essentially, it represented Hermes, who was a messenger of God. So it was about communicating, about being a messenger. And um, I think it was in the 16th century that a Swiss printer actually used that symbol, and then it became used by other printers and by medical printers, and by association, it became um, associated with medicine whereas it's actually the symbol with the one snake that is really associated with medicine. And you will see that symbol on the World Health Organization flag. So it shows you that it's still strongly associated with medicine today. So inside Harry's chart, he had these three snakes, which for me also, because the snake is associated with healing because it sheds its skin, so it can completely transform. It also has a venomous bite. Um, and that venom can also be used for healing. So it's, it's, it just seemed a very interesting thing that he actually has this aspect inside his chart. Um, it also makes him quite changeable because the, the snake could sh uh, shed its skin so he could take on one role and then he could shed it and move on to something else, which we can see at different stages through his life. So I think if um, we move to the next slide. So um, I was just going to look at the different fate cycles a little bit. So his fate actually starts at the age of eight. Um, up until that age, you just look at the individual years. And so at the age of eight, he was actually in um, what we call a fire fate. And for him, that was too much because he's got so much fire in his chart. He needs other elements as we look at the Chinese chart. So adding more fire 
made him overconfident. And this is why he was seen as a bit of a troublemaker at that age, because he was, um, he had too much fire for his own good. And so he was causing a bit of trouble with it rather than using it in the right way. Then at the age of 12, he changes fate cycle. But then he moves into the influence of the dragon. So the dragon is, um, obviously it's known as a mythological creature, um, but it also, it represents the element of earth. But we see it as cool earth because it contains water inside it. So the, um, the dragon can cool him, cool him down. It grounds him. And also inside his chart, it represents, um, it represents learning and career. So it enables him to start um, focusing on where his career is going to go. And it was during that fate cycle that even though he didn't put his heart and soul into it, he did train as a printer. And also during that time that he um, <clears throat> started to becoming interested in politics and so exploring different um, opportunities. Um, interesting, the year at the age of 15, he um, realized he had a, an interest in politics, but um, I understood he had a bit of a stutter at that age, so he wasn't that clear at speaking. So he used to take himself to Speaker's Corner to improve his speaking. Now the influence of that year is significant here because it was a monkey year. Now in the Chinese system, the monkey represents um, the element of metal and it combines, it combines inside his chart to the snake and creates water. So water is about communication. So it brought in the opportunity for him that year to start improving his communication skills. So he felt that push to do that at that time. We can move on to the next slide, please. Um, then we look at the military years. So at the age of 21, obviously the worst, the, the, the World War I broke out and um, he was enlisted into the army. And so this is a, a change um, that he embraced, so he was able to embrace that. Um, a standout age that I was given during that time is the age of 23. And the description I was given was that he's building bridges and healing people without necessarily understanding exactly what he was doing at that stage. So the interesting thing for me is in his chart, he's, um, he's in the rabbit fate at that time. So the rabbit is a very sensitive creature, but also very social. And um, in the Chinese system, the, the rabbit is seen, um, it's seen as a, an, an animal that can heal. And if you were to look at the moon at night and you say, I see the moon, I see the man in the moon, the Chinese would look to the moon and see a rabbit who's stirring um, herbs that they use for healing. So it's interesting that it's that fate that he first starts to realize his healing skills, even though he's not 100% aware of what he's doing at that time. So the energy of the rabbit is also about spring and new possibilities and new beginnings. So it's, it's helping him to, to start in new things. And then if we move to the next slide. So um, obviously he returns from the war and this is where he's starting out on his um, working at, at least as a printer and a stationer. And um, so the year that he comes back is again, it's a monkey year. So it, it's giving him some support to do some of these things that he wants to do. Um, at the age of 28, he gets married. So um, interestingly, that year brings in the very energy that represents the spouse in his chart. And you tend to see that at the time that either people meet or that they actually decide to get married. The energy that relates to relationship is there. Um, then his children, so all four children 
are born, obviously they're all quite close together in age. So they're all born apart from one, the first three are all born in the same fate cycle for Harry. And this fate cycle is, um, it was represented by the tiger, so it's inside his chart. And it's, um, it's again an energy that's um, about the new beginnings. It's about, um, so it's quite a good time for him to have the children. It's also a time that, um, because that these 20 years represent wood in his chart. And um, so that's sort of now in the previous section. For him, wood is not an element that is that easy to work with because it makes his chart a little bit too strong. And he was financially challenged here because for him metal represents his money and when you're in a wood fate for 20 years it's wood we see you use metal to prune a tree but if there's too much wood the, the metal becomes blunt so it's very difficult for him to get a lot of money he keeps trying but it's not it's going to be a financially challenging time those 20 years while he's um, in that wood fate Okay, if we move to the next one. So politics was something that he obviously touched on at different times and that's quite understandable with a strong fire chart because a lot of politicians have a lot of fire in their chart. But for Harry, he, it's really the water that allows him to communicate more effectively. And at the time that he was trying to move into politics, the water energy is not strong enough in his chart. So it's like he has the aspiration, but it's not going to work out for him. So I guess he put a lot of effort into it and then realized it's not happening. So um, that's really why, because the fire gave him the interest and the inspiration to do it, but the water wasn't strong enough for him to really communicate effectively to the right people at the right time. So then if we move on. So 1936 is um, when he becomes aware of his healing skills, which is through um, a medium telling him he, that he has that skill. Um, so interesting, this is a water year. So he's starting to get the water energy come into his chart that allows him to um, be more effective. And also the year itself is the year of the ox. No, the fate is the year is the ox, which he has for five years. So the ox is also earth, but it's cool earth again. It's the cool earth that is helpful to him. Um, when we look at the ox in the Chinese system, the ox sits in the northeast and it represents the ghost gate. So it's all about communicating with spirit. So it's during this fate cycle that he opens up to communicating with spirit. Um, and also during the rest of the ox fate is... Um, moves into the Second World War when he continued to do healing even though um, this was working from his home. And then in 1946, I think I, I didn't get to put this on here, is when he moves to Burrow, Burroughs Lee. Um, during this year is when he changes into a new fate cycle which is the fate of the rat and that energy is, um, is strong water and it clashes with his life house. Now, when you clash the life house, you move. You move in some way. Quite often you move house. So he moved house in that year and moved to quite a significant shift for him because this is um, buying Burroughs Lee, which is going to become the healing sanctuary. Okay. So 1953 um, is when Harry started um, or presented the Commission on Divine Healing. Um, this is the year when he would turn 60. 
60 is what we see as Jupiter return. So it's like you've, um, in the Chinese system, there's a 60 year cycle. And so when you become 60, you've completed that whole cycle. So it gives you, it's like you have a different level of wisdom, a greater understanding of things. So in this year, he'd, he'd reached that point. And um, the fate that he's in is metal, but also combines with him to water. So it's giving him, um, the metal is bringing in um, some support the chart needs and the water is allowing him to communicate better. So he's communicating freely and um, not always getting the results straight away because obviously this sort of thing is, is making a big and dramatic shift. So the, um, the healing demonstrations, this is also when he was in the strong water fate, um, which I think this is, the, this is where it helped him to have already done the um, learning how to do public speaking, because now when he's in a water fate, it's a lot easier for him to stand on a platform and talk to people as well as do the healing. Because for some people doing healing is one thing, but standing or being in such a public arena like that and also performing wouldn't be easy for everybody. And obviously he found that very natural and it, it was just something that he could do. And the whole the energy of the fate was just supporting him not only to do the healing but also to be able to communicate at the same time um, this i just did as a little chart to just get a feel for the changes um, that represent harry's timeline so you can see um, from his birth in 1893 to being in the army to his healing adventure starting it just is a, a little chart to trace um, highlights key moments in his life and then his obviously he's left quite a legacy behind him so it's now in the hands of you guys <laughs> to keep this going and um, strengthen it um, so I think, uh, I think that gives a flavour of what his chart is all about. I mean, one of the things I think was quite interesting as well is about the fact that he actually kept monkeys and that monkeys cropped up at different stages in his life. And the energy of the monkey when it comes up in the horoscope is really good for him. And I know other people didn't always like these monkeys, but he did. So it's just seemed quite an interesting um, little highlight that I noticed um, in some of the notes that I read about his history. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, there's lots of information there and it's lovely this is recorded as well because I know some people will really cherish going back over this, Nikki. Um, and I love the timeline. So uh, thank you so much for all the, the hard work and effort that you with Rowena and I know a lot of people are supporting you guys to get that information together. Okay. all right thank you so much um so uh we i'd like to invite uh linda now to take us into the inspirational side of things uh feel free to grab a drink obviously everyone so you know if you need to um have a quick break um at, at any point um to to take us through now we have linda then myself with the guided meditation and then we move into the um uh, the tea party side of things and that will go on beyond four so uh, definitely refreshments are on their way as well okay over to you Linda thank you Nikki perfect thank you Teresa um, it's a real honor to be here today because we know that today is a really special day it is a day of celebration and we're gathered together connected by universal love soul to soul to celebrate the birthday of Mr. Harry Edwards and to give thanks for his really wonderful healing legacy. And even though we can't be physically together because of the strange times that we find ourselves in, 
something really remarkable has happened over the these last few weeks and we find ourselves even more connected on so many different levels. I, I think it's interesting that Harry Edwards found Burroughs Lee at the time he did, when the whole world had been absolutely shattered, decimated by a world war. And here we are celebrating his birthday today, when the whole world is being ravaged by a different sort of war. When he found Burroughs Lee, he found it because he was lost. And he knew it was the right place for him to set up his healing sanctuary. It was going to be where his healing ministry flourished. And I think so many of us find the sanctuary when we're lost. I always remember the very first time I went to Burroughs Lee and it was at a deeply traumatic, very dark time for me. Um, I was in the depths of grief and very, um, very, very lost, quite broken in fact. And I can remember going to Burroughs Lee that first time and not just feeling that I'd come home, but knowing that I'd come home. And I think that sense of knowing is something that's been shared by very many people that have come up the drive to Burroughs Lee. And, and I think that that experience is yet to be held by a huge number of other people who've yet to find it. And they will find it because when the time is right, it will still be there for them. So through years of healing, Mr. Edwards has left such a strong healing power, a loving energy that just transcends space and time. And Burroughs Lee has healing qualities to soothe and to heal on so many different levels. And we're so blessed that all the healers and the light workers that are drawn there carry on giving and receiving the gift of healing freely. It really is a wonderful legacy. So today on his birthday, it seems very right to say thank you. Thank you to Harry and all of his helpers and guides and angels who help us continue the healing work in his name. His sanctuary shines out as a beacon of hope and healing. The lockdown has provided a unique opportunity to reach out to more people and animals through technology in this country and across the globe. The healing books hold, held at Harry's are continuous, continuously updated as more requests for healing are received. Healing energy is much needed now. We know that healers, we all have so much work to do, services of life, of light to offer. So coming together and giving freely from the heart, no egos, no judgment, no agendas, no self, just healing service and pure intention for the greater good is a wonderful gift that we could offer for Harry. And spirit always has a way to remind us if we're not on the right path. And just as the reset button for the earth has been activated, it feels that now is the time to really forge ahead with Harry's work. Harry's vision of healing being accepted and recognised as worthy by the medical profession could finally be coming to fruition. As our community comes together with other healing organisations, holistic centres and charities, it will inevitably open up more opportunities for healing to be given, received and talked openly about, more openly recognised as an authentic healing power. And what better birthday present could we give Mr Harry Edwards? By working together, shining our collective light out from our hearts, anything is possible with pure intention. The smallest acts can become the greatest achievements, the tiniest seeds, the tallest, strongest sunflowers. So from my heart to Harry's, I say thank you and bless you and happy birthday. And from my heart to yours, love and light, grateful thanks, always to Mr. Edwards for watching over us and guiding us all on our healing paths, for leading us to Burroughs Lee and the sanctuary which is and will be 
the shining light of healing for all time. Thank you so much, Linda. That was beautiful. <clears throat> all right, so I'm just going to um, invite you all now. <clears throat> um, so th this segment is us starting to build for a collective kind of gift giving, if you'd like to think of it that way. Um, and just before we move into that, so a bit like we do for the healing minutes, that's what we're going to do. So I'll take you through a very light and uh, short guided meditation um, as we start to galvanize our intention to send healing for the highest good. Just before I do that, I, I touched on right at the start of when we started earlier today, um, to also invite this wider gift giving for those that are inspired. Uh, if you've got a different healing modality or, or want to give some kind of gift in some way outside of this guided meditation, we all gifts are gratefully received. And just to give an example of that, I'd just like to invite Guy Taylor. So Guy, if you can just join us for a moment, just share just for a minute or two, just what, what you've been inspired to do. Okay. That's why I love these live sessions. We're very cosy, aren't we? Very informal. So, <laughs> which is great. Hi. Um, yeah. Well, obviously, I know a lot of you have been here before and, and seen when I've been working there with the pyramid, and know that usually I've set it up the day before to build energy in the Blue Bells room for people to come and have their experiences on the following day. But it occurred to me that all the time I've been doing this, I never actually did some healing on, on Burroughs Lee. Now, I know I always say to you, when you've been to demonstrations or sickness mornings, whatever, about how we actually can use to do distant healing, whether you want to work on somebody, whether you've got a place you want to work on or an animal. So it occurred to me that I needed to find a couple of photographs today. So as you can probably see here, this is a really one of my favourite ones at the back of Harry's in the garden. Yeah. And one to the front here as the as the entrance. I don't know if you can see them there. Oh, now, yeah. um, what I did... If you could just lower the camera slightly, Rowena, just so we can see the front of the house. So if you drop it down. There we go. That all right yeah 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 that's that? great thank you okay yeah so the, the top one is one of my favorite ones that you view from the back garden of harry's and the one at the front but it was interesting that when i started to work on it today i was using the weaver with the thought that as you can see above the photographs at the moment i have this thing called a metatron star um, but I'll tell you all about briefly in a second it's just that i actually used my own personal weaver today to go across firstly the back of the house and then the front and it was interesting because what I found was if you can see on the photograph there there are um, the areas that are black and white beam areas now those areas in particular I think Rowie my glamorous assistant is pointing me <laughs> to you now um, um, those areas there now I believe that bottom one that Rowie's just pointed to in the middle there was where all the secretaries used to write the letters uh, go uh, sort of to answer the letters that came in and the one above was Harry's bedroom and to the to the to the near side on the just this in here there was the large uh, downstairs lounge and the sitting room for the family upstairs and at the far end uh, over here is where Harry actually used to do his messages and i believe that's where blessing me passed away and above is also what was a sorry to interrupt guy rowena could you just drop the camera slightly a bit more there we go perfect all right yeah that's great yeah so the so that the end the end one at the bottom was where harry used to do his messages and recordings for people and above was um, a bedroom, which I now believe, I think, might be Alison's room. So it should be supercharged. Um, and also, those three areas, the weaver worked very, very strongly. Now, that, to me, indicated that it was 
working in a way that was conducive with areas being very special to, to Harry. I mean, the whole place is, but these particular areas significantly moved under the Weaver uh, guidance and healing this morning. As to, as you look at the bottom picture, um, where the entrance goes into the reception. You know, I don't know if we can see that okay. You can drop the camera a bit more. Okay. Bit more. Um, you don't need to come closer, but if you can just move the camera down. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And, and, and interestingly enough, again, the, the actual area that is seemingly black and white beamed area was the area very much that the weaver tended to work on. Now, I guess they are all significant areas that, that Harry frequented a lot. And also the fact that when I found a diagram of a drawing when it was first being built, there was actually no movement at all after it had worked on these particular photographs. But curiously enough, I also had a, an aerial photograph of the whole of Harry's on a beautiful day like it is today. And after I already worked on those two previous pictures there was no movement at all um, so yeah it was it was very interesting I thought well you know what I need to do now for this to continue is I'm now placing it under the Metatron star which you can see if I raise it up higher I hope you can see that yeah beautiful uh, just just to briefly tell you that obviously the Metatron star is a very special piece of tool geometric form that I use when I'm doing healing work but not only from a point of view on working with people, but it does have a relevance to where it's positioned now to working on the photographs that you see of Burroughs Lee. It's like continuing a, a, a geometric form of, of, of healing and, and giving well-being and clearance and energy boosting to Burroughs Lee. Um, so that really was my little take, if you like, on today, just to give you a bit of an insight what you can do in terms of distant healing, it doesn't matter what place it is, whether it's whether it's Burroughs Lee or wherever, just to show you that that it does actually um, make a significant difference. Thank you, Guy. That's so kind of you as well. Thank you. That's so interesting. All right. Um, and so I'd just like you all to, to join me in a moment um, with a guided meditation. Um, as we think about Burroughs Lee, I'm just going to bring the picture up that Guy just just shared. Um, if I can. Just moving back here. And so I'd just like to invite you to settle in as we start to think about sending light and healing to all of Burroughs Lee um, and those beautiful grounds there um, and I'll move the slides a little bit um, but if you can join me now in, in closing your eyes for a moment and just as we're starting to really start to think about opening up I know many of you that are joining us today are healers so I'm just going to invite you to ground and to set up your, I'll just invite Guy, if you can go on mute for me, that would be helpful. <laughs> and, and as we work through, all the way up through the body, opening and starting to open up the crown chakra and bringing in that wonderful light. And as that's doing and happening um, in a way that you feel comfortable, in the way that you naturally work and, and sharing your lights, just like you to join me for a moment on a, on a tour as we start visualising the sanctuary. Um, if you've been there, you'll know what I mean. And if not, then if you can imagine. Imagine, send it. I'm just going to invite Rowena to go on mute, if that's okay, Rowena. And so 
starting at the the gate of the sanctuary you can visualize that and the entrance of that lovely long drive the gate is fully bloomed with all the wonderful flowers and plants of the season and even when you start to walk up or drive up the, that wonderful drive you can feel the healing starting to to kick in i'd just like you to imagine sprinkling this wonderful light that you're sharing all the way up through the drive in the grounds of Burroughs Lee and as we walk around the grounds before we go into the house imagining the grounds really alight and in full bloom with the seasons of the day in whatever way is right for the highest good of the sanctuary you can imagine that this wonderful grounds, there's 32 acres there that are all very, very on a special place. The energy is palpable as you move through. And I'm just inspiring you now to, again, for the highest good of the grounds, of Burroughs Lee, of this wonderful powerhouse. It's a lighthouse, a beacon of light. The grounds themselves very nurturing and nourishing. So as people walk through the grounds, they feel this sense of healing. Particularly if you're a healer, it's a wonderful place. And for everyone that's, uh, that visits. Imagining almost like we have the rainbow kind of healing gardens with the beautiful bluebells when they're out, the daffodils all the wonderful blooms, the blossoms, the hydrangeas, the rose garden, everything has a season. <laughs> and I think someone's just joined us now with um, good old and just as we move into imagining those wonderful gardens and that healing sanctuary. I know that you guys are sharing your light there, but imagining those gardens and sending light. Wonderful. We've got Rory joining us just going to go back to sharing my screen there we go and focusing now on the house and that wonderful light that you can see in the picture there if you can imagine a column of lights now beaming all the way from the ground all the way up beyond the house, beyond the grounds, all the supporting areas, almost like a network of lights. I love the idea, uh, as some describe this place as the powerhouse of sheer. And although that life is light and life is very self-generative, today, Harry's birthday, uh, the gift of healing is very, very received. And this might be something that we look to do more regularly so that we're building that power even more and contributing uh you know this full circle of giving the gift of, of healing and light so in a moment i just want you to imagine that wonderful powerhouse of lights really building beyond the house into these beautiful rainbow grounds and beyond and this network is fully supporting other light centers globally, communities and individuals. So it's the gift that keeps giving. And in one moment now, I'm just gonna chime a small bell. And for one minute, I'd like to invite you all to send that love, that light, that healing, 
so that Burroughs Lee is feeling refreshed and buoyant and whatever other words that you feel inspired for its highest good and, and the highest good of all, all included. So I'm going to invite you now for one minute to do all of that. Wonderful. So if you can come back into the room with me, thank you very much for sharing. And some of those things you may be inspired to keep sharing. Uh, this was really just to kind of open up the invitation today. Um, and to thank you very much for this gift that's very, very precious, very valuable. And like I said, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, just as we're starting to move into the next part, which I'll invite Alison in a moment to, to say a few words and then we'll move into the tea party. Just want to make sure that, again, coming back into the room, that you're feeling very grounded and that you just gently fold all the energy centres from the crown all the way through your system, feeling very grounded and just folding gently to the level that's right for you for this time. Wonderful. All right, so I'll stop sharing my screen. It's a lovely image of Harry and uh, sharing some birthday wishes as we start to come back in the room and get ready for a tea party. And Alison, are you not sure if Alison was able to join us today, but if you're with us, would you like to say a few words? Oh yeah, I can see you. There you are. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> um, thank you, Teresa. Um, I'm Alison McQuinney. For those who don't know me, I'm the operations director at the sanctuary. Um, and so happy birthday to Harry. I think it's important that we recognize Harry's vision and how we are realizing that in today's times. Harry was passionate about healing and wanted Burroughs Lee to be a home of healing for all. And it's important that in these days we have a strong focus on keeping Harry's vision and legacy going. We're living in different times that allow us more options to get the message out there. Today is a really good example with the Zoom platform that I also did not know anything about a couple of months ago. And these are exciting times. It's important we keep our momentum going and as we kind of launch new activities think well what would Harry want and I'm sure he would be behind us backing us as we try to continue to promote um, Burroughs Lee 
as um, the home for healing for all and encourage more people up our driveway and to engage with us. And I think um, the phrase that sticks in my mind would be carpe diem. Um, let's seize the days and let's seize the moment and let's keep the momentum going. We've been living in some very strange times um, since March, April with this pandemic. Um, and that has encouraged us to look at new ways to reach wider communities. Um, and we've been doing an awful lot on social media via Facebook and the Zoom platforms to do that. Um, there are quite a few people that I would like to thank for that journey. Teresa in particular, um, for leading the way technology speaking um, and guiding us on that journey. Um, but also I would like to um, extend huge thanks as well to Linda Sewell. Linda, you've been amazing in um, helping us along that journey with the Sunday services and also the weekly Cygnus talks and sourcing some fantastic speakers for us. And um, I mean, this is only just part of what you've done for the sanctuary, um, the tip of an iceberg, but I just want to extend our thanks to you for that. It really is appreciated. Um, I'd also like to thank Val Chandler for all her help um, in helping us with the social media promotions of all our events. Um, and Joe Haslam for helping us with animal healing as well. And also Rowena and Guy, you two have been amazing too, both with your talks today and also what you do for the sanctuary and you're both very much appreciated, thank you. I'd also like to thank all the speakers um, for today. I think today's been a really lovely party. Um, I'd like to um, put out a call to action um, we're really trying to encourage as many people as possible to become sanctuary friends um, who are not involved with us at present. Um, this is a scheme that costs £25 a year and for that you can get greater engagement with the sanctuary, um, some discounts on our retreats and discounts on um, items purchased through the shop. You can join via our website but it would be really great to um, grow a wider and larger community for um, the sanctuary. Um, I'm not actually broadcasting from Wonderland today. For those of you who don't know what Wonderland is, um, because my name is Alison, um, I was given this lovely gift from the trustees of signage for the outside of my office of Alice in Wonderland. And the days I'm in, then it shows I'm in with a sign in the days I'm out, it shows I'm out. I'm not broad broadcasting from Wonderland today, but in a true Alice in Wonderland fashion. Let's get this party started. Cheers. That's wonderful, Alison. Thank you so much. Um, and I think it really kind of sums up today, really. Um, we've got a few tunes that we're going to just, I'm going to switch on one of the songs here that I know is a direct request from Healing Awareness Week. Um, so I just invite people that would like to stay on for a bit of a party in the informal um to to go grab a, a drink and uh, join us back here in a moment for those of you that want to say goodbye now i know it's you know it, it's been from two till four so you know it's been quite action-packed so um appreciate if you need to to get on with other things too um but here's a little tune that i know quite a few of you enjoyed during healing awareness week And I'm just going to stop the recordings now as well. But enjoy the tunes, grab a drink, and then we'll move into an informal cuppa in a chat.